My name is Karen Stackpole, and I'm a gong addict. A gong is a metallophone. It's one of the oldest instruments there is. It first appeared in, in China around 600 AD. You know, the Bronze Age was in full swing about third millennium BC, so gongs no doubt appeared much earlier than when they appeared in written history. I discovered gongs back in mid-November of 1991 at a Percussive Arts Society International Convention and I was wandering through the aisles. thought I died and went to heaven. There's like drums everywhere. And I heard this big, incredible roar. And they had this big 60-inch symphonic gong, which was just amazing. It blew my mind. And that their, gong, their, their booth was just full of gongs. They had all their sound creation gongs, the 60-inch and the planet gongs, which are tuned to the orbital frequencies of the planets of our solar system. Uh, a fellow named Hans Cousteau, uh, used the law of octaves to take the orbital frequency of the planet and bring it into the audible range, specifically tuned to have a fundamental that matches the orbital frequency of the planet. The Asian style of making gongs is uh, they take molten, a molten bronze alloy and they pour out into a, a round that they superheat and they hammer with steel hammers and then they pour cold water on it um, so to cool it really quickly so that the metal is more elastic and more resistant to breaking. So then they, they'll heat it and hammer it and then shape it and cool it and heat it and hammer it and shape it and cool it, starting with steel hammers and eventually moving on towards the finishing process with, with wooden hammers. And so with this hot forging process structure, the crystalline structure of the metal is more amorphous so the sound of, a, of an Asian gong, typically more muted, uh, darker, a little earthier sounding, a little bit more crazy. And if you look at the way Peisty makes gongs, and they're made in Germany, they take a special alloy that they have uh, nickel silver in it, and they roll it flat. And so they start with cold sheet metal um, cut into rounds, and so it's already flat. Um, they superheat the outside and the inside to create tension in the metal and they crimp the rim down, kind of like a bottle cap. And on these great big tree trunks, they smooth out the rim and then they begin uh, a pattern of hammer strokes, different sized hammers um, that they make themselves and they'll uh, distribute the tension in various ways depending on the kind of gong that they're making. A tam-tam -tam is a flat gong. Um, most often it has a shallow rim around the edge. Um, some of them are flat without the rim and they de the sound decays more quickly. A true gong, the original gong, has a raised center, a boss, a nipple gong, and it's got a deep rim. And that boss in the center um, focuses the tone, so it's not going to uh, the sound isn't going to radiate as freely out from the gong. It's going to have a clear bell tone with a fundamental pitch. The big fluffy mallets, which are typical, you know, the old gong show mallet, um, you could get a lot of different sounds just by hitting the gong in different places. In the middle, oftentimes you get uh, the low end, and then there's often a sweet spot somewhere off to this side of the center where the gong will really open up. One of my favorite things to use are uh, rubber balls attached to dowels and rods of various sizes and different consistencies of rubber. Um, depending on the size, the shape, and the density, you can pull out different pitches and get different effects from the gong, from very high to very low to incredible blossoming of the gongs just by using friction. Well, initially I started playing gongs organically with the fluffy mallet, and then in 1999, 2000, came out with a, uh, a solo gong record that was organic, uh, you know, uh, just mic'd gongs, and I improvised. And then my friend, the electrician, recorded my next album, and one of the tracks he manipulated and did a lot of uh, processing and it became my favorite track on the whole album. I thought it was really cool. 2008, we started recording Machine Shop, and then 
we finally released it in April of this year, and right now we're putting together the live show. I'm in love with metal and exploring metal, which makes gongs a perfect instrument for me. (laughs) 